I decided that my plant needs a friend, so I got this to keep a company. <laughs> Such a worried grumpy spoon. Hey crew, welcome back to The Spiritual Social. I'm Lexi, your local light worker. I'm a tarot reader and an astrologer, and this is a tarot school episode, an episode in which I like to show you a specific type of spread with the help of a specific type of deck. And the combination of the spread with the deck and how to use it, I hope will make a really fun instructional video for you. If you are already practicing tarot, maybe you might want to brush up on some things or figure out how I like to use certain spreads and certain decks. Or if you're a beginner, maybe I can whet your appetite to start playing with the tarot more and divinate for yourself and for your loved ones or maybe even potential clients. So in today's episode, I'm going to be using the cat tarot and I will show you guys a circular spread, how you can use it and what might be the benefits of it, what might be the downsides. I'll be talking about the downsides and the, and the benefits of using the cat tarot as well. Make sure that before we get into it, you like this video, you subscribe and you have a look at the links in my description box below for an opportunity to maybe order a personal reading with me, uh, connect with me on Instagram at ms underline bontemp, maybe even purchase my twin flame novel, The Storyteller. Or have a look at my other channel, The Spiritual Soulscapes, where recently I started reading in Romanian for you guys. Okay, so now let's begin. The circular spread is a really interesting spread. I actually am filming from my bed because I needed enough space to show you guys the spread. It includes 13 cards and it can be used for a number of divinatory purposes. Some people use it as a zodiac spread, which means that because there are 12 astrological signs, you can pull a card for each astrological sign to see what is the energy that they bring into your life. This also correlates very well with each house in your birth chart. We all have in our birth charts 12 astrological houses, even though some of them could be clustered with planets, others might not have anything there, others might just have some asteroids, but we all have 12 houses. So you can use the spread to check the energy of each of the astrological houses with the tarot, not only with your astrological knowledge. In addition to this, some people use the circular spread as a year ahead spread. Yes, because guess what guys, we not only have 12 astrological zodiac signs, but we also have 12 months in the year. So you can pull a card for each month of the upcoming year. And I think this is um, particularly timely right now. I'm filming this in December 2021. So if you're interested in figuring out for your own benefit, what might 2022 bring up in your life, you can use the spread I'm going to show you in a second and maybe choose to use a different deck if the cat tarot is not your favorite thing in the world to actually find out what will be the content of each month's challenge and blessing in your life. Because this spread can be used for both a zodiac, a houses and the year ahead kind of situations, I'll be mentioning all three of them so you can potentially um, think about which one might apply the best for you. So I'm going to start with the first house, position one, Aries and also the month of January. Then the second house, position two, Taurus, and the month of February. Position three, Gemini, and the month of March. Position four, Cancer, the fourth house, and the month of April. Position five, Leo, the fifth house, and the month of May. Position six, Virgo, the sixth house, and the month of June. 
position seven, Libra, the seventh house, and the month of July. Position eight, Scorpio, the eighth house, and the month of August. Position nine, Sagittarius, the ninth house, and the month of September. Position 10, Capricorn, the 10th house, and the month of October. Position 11, Aquarius, the 11th house, and the month of November. And last but never least, position 12, Pisces, the 12th house, and the month of December. This is the spread. We have here the 12 astrological houses, the 12 astrological signs, and also the 12 months of the year represented through the realm of the tarot. I think it's important for you guys to really focus on aligning the cards properly. Why? Well, it's because it's important not only due to the symmetry and the yin and yang kind of chi based energy of the objects in front of you, but also because we want to have a clear line between the ascendant and the descendant, the first house and the seventh house of the zodiac. And of course, another important line, the Imun Koeli and the Midheaven which are represented in astrology by the 4th house and the 10th house. I need to say that using the cat tarot for any kind of spreads is particularly difficult. The cat tarot, in spite of its beautiful, cute imagery, is not an easy deck to use. This is mostly because the suits are not represented by any other symbols than these tiny things that you see here in the corners of the cards. Let me show you up close. There you go. So you're going to have to guess the color of the suit. What could this be? Is it swords? Is it coins? Is it wands? Or is it cups? It's quite difficult on a first look to understand what is this card talking about. At the same time, they mostly use Roman numerals, which are not really that easy to use for a variety of people that have not been accustomed in school to count with no Roman numerals. So for example, look at this card, right? It's very cute, but what does it represent? So this would be the nine of wands. We see here red, fire, wands, and this is the Ro Roman numeral representation of number nine. And then let's go back to this other card. We have here kind of a jagged edge, right? And white. So what would this speak of? This speaks of swords energy. And we have here the Roman numeral eight. So as I said, the cards are pretty difficult. You're gonna have to kind of work your way through them. And I do think that you need to prepare a little bit before you start on the journey of interpreting with the cat tarot. Let me give you another example. We have here the two of cups. You see two? And we see the cup. Thank God that actually <laughs> the representation does look like a cup. But then we also have, right? So this is pentacle energy, green, the earth, and number five, the five of coins, which normally in tarot actually shows um, a pretty destitute, desolate, low self-worth kind of vibration. But in this deck, <laughs> it shows two cats coming together. It reminds me of the same positive and sweet and tender imagery that can be found in the same way representative of the Five of Pentacles in the Tower of Sexual Magic. The Tower of Sexual Magic has a very romantic interpretation of the Five of Pentacles. The fact that I mentioned the zodiac signs and the months doesn't mean that Aries corresponds with January. We all know that the period in between the last weeks of December and the first weeks of January represents Capricorn season. The energy of this tarot card can tell you in the specific type of spread what the month of January brings you and then what the month of February, March, April, so on and so forth. Yeah, I hope this is clear for everyone up until this point. Let's have a look at the cards. So we have here, you see, even reversed, it's actually quite difficult to think what is this card representing. So we know it is red, so that means wands, fire. We also see these clubs over here, so thank God for the imagery. But when you have the card reversed, and if you choose to read reverse cards, it will be particularly difficult with the cat tarot to do so. So let's flip it. 
Okay, now we have the card flipped and we can see quite clearly that it speaks of the four of wands. We also have the numbers in the background represented. So you can actually, you can cheat a little bit in this card and go by counting the clubs rather than focusing on the symbol. So we begin with a promise, a promise of a new spiritual foundation in the month of January that could potentially be delayed. So this is the content of the first card. Now, let's see, for the month of February, we have another reverse card that I've just unblocked to me. Cards that are in the reverse represent blocked energy. They represent a delay, something that is stalled. And we have here for the month of February, Seven of Wands. So the Seven of Wands talks about having to hold your ground, but because it came up in a blocked position in the month of February, the querent, so the person for whom we are creating the spread, an imaginary seeker, is going to have a little bit of an impediment in the month of February standing up for themselves. It could be that a group of friends, we see the mice here, might be pushing this person down. There could be some peer pressure that they have to live up to. There could be some power plays in their group of co-workers or even their family members and relatives might not truly see their worth and they will find it difficult to defend themselves in the month of February. Okay, so let's see. For the month of March, the blocked energy continues. I would recommend that this person sage and does some sort of chakra realignment ceremony. Maybe they would get in contact with a Reiki practitioner to get some sort of energetic healing because there is something clearly not working in this person's life. And I think it's because their own energy and the energy that they bring into their personal connections is a little bit all over the place. For the month of March, for the Quarant, we have the Page of Pentacles blocked. So let's unblock it. Keep in mind, guys, you are powerful creators. And as readers, you can transmute energy, especially those of you that have planets in Scorpio. So we have here Page of Pentacles unblocked. This means that this person will feel a little bit inadequate in the month of March in terms of their monetary and financial gain. They might decide to leave this group where the power plays have been going on and choose their own path. But they might find it difficult to maybe find gainful employment in the month of March following the fact that they quit or they gave up on this really difficult social group situation from the month of February. So we see already how the story is unfolding. The person began with certain fears because blocked one's energy talks about a lack of courage. One's energy being a lot about the fire of the spirit, determination and courage. So we see how this person's lack of faith and lack of a solid spiritual foundation is already kind of producing certain obstacles and challenges for them in this yearly spread. Let's see what happens in the month of April. We have here judgment. Mm -hmm. And again, blocked. So this person is refusing to actually listen to their inner voice and change something important in their life. <laughs> I also... I, I just need to draw attention to how funny this card is, right? With the Egyptian cat, uh, possibly a representative of um, the goddess, uh, the cat goddess Bast in Egyptian folklore. But I just think that it's very cute. <laughs> so anyway, coming back to the interpretation, following that brief funny hiatus. So I feel that this person refuses to pay attention to their inner voice, which is leading to a lot of missed opportunities. The judgment card is about rebirth. It's about heeding that wake up call, feeling that this is the time to change something significant in their lives. And this is taking place for this person in the month of April or in their fourth house, right? The fourth house of the zodiac is the one that governs over our emotional stability. So this person continues to find it difficult to listen to their intuition and to connect with spirit, connect with the higher force. Because I feel that if this person would actually start praying, start um, letting go, start trusting life more, start believing that things are possible in their life, things are actually going to become slowly unblocked. But they refuse to do so. There is a sense of stubbornness going on here. We have here in the fifth position, the page of swords and again, blocked. So let's unblock it. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
So there might be an opportunity to collaborate with somebody. There might be some interesting news that are coming this person's way. However, again, this person chooses not to open up to them. They might be mm, mistrusting this communication. They might feel as if whatever people are telling them due to potentially past uh, power plays and problems in social interactions could be something that is too good to be true. The page of source talks about having a beginner's mind in terms of the communication, the skills that you have, the ways in which you go about putting your desires into words. It also speaks about news. Pages in general represent news, whether this is financial news, educational news, or just a piece of information that you require in order to start building, start planning. This could also be a failed opportunity with a friend that could be a Gemini, Libra and Aquarius. Now, in the sixth month, so we're already at June right now, yeah, we're in the sixth house of Virgo and the energy continues to be blocked. Let's unblock it. Mm -hmm. So we have here the Three of Cups and this card talks about enjoying yourself, having fun. I feel that this person will struggle to get a holiday to actually escape for a couple of maybe weeks or days um, to the beach, to the seaside, someplace where this person can enjoy summer. I feel that this person could have some arguments with their friends and this is why they are not able to um, pursue pleasure because, you know, keep in mind, guys, this is July. Uh, sorry, this is June. It's a very beautiful season. And with the Three of Cups here, this is about enjoying life, partying, having fun, uh, being merry with friends. But this person refuses to do so. Hmm. Our poor querent. Then we have the Page of Cups in the seventh house or the month of July. And this shows a cat <laughs> digging into the toilet bowl. And... It's really interesting because the Page of Cups, again, talks about uh, an opportunity for romance. Somebody could be hitting on our querent. Somebody could proposition them romantically. But guess what? Because the card was blocked, our querent continues to miss out on opportunities that could make their year ahead actually a pretty fulfilling year. Now, in the 8th house, we have the King of Swords, Oof, and it's blocked. So again, this person does not open up, is not willing to take advice from a person that is more communicative, highly educated, and potentially could even mentor them. So there is a feeling here because this is the 8th house, the house of Scorpion power, and it represents the month of August, one of the hottest months in the year. That this person is really quite, can be quite hot headed in the sense that instead of listening to the advice of somebody that could have a lot of knowledge, a king of swords, um, a Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius in their life, this person refuses to take that advice. And paradoxically, I think this advice could empower them. It could um, place them on the right path, it could maybe help them um, negotiate things better at work. But this person refuses to be schooled. Speaking of schooling, we have finally reached the moment of September and we have here the ninth house, traditionally ruled by Sagittarius. This is the house of freedom and higher learning and seeking your truth. And what do we have here? A cat cheekily munching on some hearts. And we have here the three of swords. So one of the few cards that is upright in the spread is the one that is pretty sad. The one that talks about a free party situation, not being chosen in love, not being given the love that you want, feeling broken hearted, feeling restless and just sad and disappointed by life. So this is the overall energy that this person is actually going through. I wouldn't put it behind this person, the querent, our imaginary seeker. To be somebody that struggles with depression and because they are struggling with depression they are committed to self-sabotaging their opportunities for growth and for enjoyment of life so this person deals with a lot of fear and a lot of heavy feelings of loss that are blocking their capacity to push their life forward but you see how spirit is trying to help them the basic thing that this person needs to do is to start saying yes to more of life's opportunity and speaking of opportunity we can came to 
the 10th house ruled by Capricorn and the month of October, the month of harvest, we have here the queen of swords blocked. So let's unblock her. Mm -hmm. So this card speaks about an individual in this person's life, uh, usually court cards, the queens, the kings, the pages, the knights, represent people, actual people that are helping somebody on their path. But in this case, it looks like it could be a mother figure, it could be a boss, or even an ex-lover. I'm not sure why, but I'm picking up on this. So guys, always follow your intuition, if, even if the cards are showing you something different. I'm picking up that this could be an ex-lover that is trying to re-emerge in this person's life. Judging by the astrological transits in that period, I do remember that in this year for Libra season, so Libra season takes place from the end of September, beginning of October, we had a Mercury retrograde in Libra. So maybe just by using that example, let's say, by using astrological knowledge of the current transits, when you are doing a spread, you can combine the two. So for a Mercury retrograde period, in the loving and relationship-based sign of Libra, this person might have had an ex from the past, the Queen of Swords, Libra, Gemini, or Aquarius, trying to come back into their life to help them on their career, because we're talking about the 10th house, and to maybe even reconnect with them emotionally because the 10th house sits opposite from the 4th house, the house of emotional stability and privacy. However, because the Queen of Swords was blocked, guess what our seeker said? No, thank you very much. And then we move on to number 11. The 11th house or the month of November, Aquarius ruled. Let's unblock the Queen of Pentacles. Oh my goodness. So it seems like our seeker, our querent, seems to be quite um, a romantic magnet. There is again another opportunity for our seeker to connect with somebody that they might have met through work. Coins always represent situations regarding work, trade, commerce, negotiations. But it seems as if the querent got blocked into you know, the, the unhealthy habit of overthinking things of not really putting their heart into the situation. So again, this was a missed opportunity with potentially an earth-ruled individual because coins represents the element of earth. We have here queen, feminine, and this could be a Virgo, Taurus, or Capricorn individual. Depending on the transits, depending on the person and what other details they, t they tell you or share with you during the tarot reading, you can figure it out and hone in on which specific sign that might be. But because this is an imaginary general reading, I'm not really able to tell you whether this was a, indeed a Virgo or a Capricorn. You could, however, find out in in lack of such information potentially the seeker is mysterious and hasn't provided you with further details on their life or just decided to go with the flow and check you you know you could actually figure out what that might be based on the position of the cards surrounding the queen of pentacles and I am tempted to say that because the queen of swords is next to the queen of pentacles and because the queen of swords is potentially a Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius. I'm getting some Libra vibes because we talked about Libra energy. And we have here an Earth sign. So Earth and Air signs. There are two Earth and Air signs in the Zodiac ruled by the same planet, Venus. Libra is ruled by Venus and also Taurus is ruled by Venus. So by using logical deduction, I assume that this could be a Taurian woman that this person met through work. Yeah. So in this way, guys, you can solve these riddles. And obviously you can pull more cards to clarify. But for the purpose of this spread, I'm only using it for instructional purposes and not for divinatory purposes right now. Okay, so the final card, <laughs> the 12th house ruled by Pisces and the month of December. Sees our seeker bearing the weight of all of these um, self-abnegating behaviors, of all of these no's that the person has been saying throughout the year, the rewards that this person is reaping, the five of cups blocked. This is actually more positive than you guys might think, because usually the five of cups talks about loss, but because it came blocked, I feel that this person is finally wising up to the wealth of their poor decisions. So they're taking stock of what has happened to them in the year. 
or they will be taking stock in the December of the coming year, depending on how you choose to use the spread to wrap up a 12 month cycle or to actually foresee what will happen in the upcoming 12 month cycle. This person is choosing to walk away from crying over spilled milk. They are choosing to let go their feeling of loss and to stop being so disappointed and so sad about life's opportunities. This person is walking away from persecution, a state of inner persecution, and from a feeling that I've been sad for too long. Now I'm ready to stop the cycle. I have been shown throughout my year that there were plenty of opportunities for me to experience happiness. And I've realized that the only thing that stands in between me and the happiness I could have both at work and in my personal relationships is me, actually. My bad habits, my bad behaviors, my desire to just focus on what I lack rather than the opportunities that are already given to me. The empty bowls of food in front of me rather than the clean, fresh, new bowls that can be filled with good food at any moment. The interesting part of the spread is that once we have looked at the position of the 12 zodiac signs, the 12 houses and the 12 months, we can pull one final card that talks about what kind of attitude does the querent or our seeker, what kind of attitude do they need to embody in order to gain success? This is position 13 and it speaks directly of the deep understanding that this person needs to have for the upcoming blessings and challenges in their year or in their astrological energy. And we have here the beautiful King of Cups and I'm so happy to see it upright. By being compassionate, by being kind, but also by not revealing their feelings too quickly, this person could have had a lot of success in this year. So this is the key to everything that you see here. And it helps, especially if you're struggling a little bit to interpret the, posi the position of all of these houses. For some reason, I cannot speak in this reading today. I'm really sorry, guys, but I do try to control it as much as I can. So the King of Cups actually talks about this. Again, whatever happens to you during a reading, use it as a sign. It is spirit trying to come through in mysterious ways, trying to give you additional intuitive hits. This person needs to not speak too much during this year. They need to feel more. They need to read people's energies. They need to let their intuition guide them into situations that can turn in their favor. But in order to do so, they need to trust. And also, you see the dolphins here in the background, they need to be playful. Dolphins to me speak of playfulness. We also have this beautiful Pisces um, color here. So Pisces energy, this person would benefit in that year or would change the astrological energy in their chart if they act more like a Piscean, if they're mysterious, if they're kind, if they're forgiving and compassionate, if they don't lie, because we all know one of the biggest problems of Neptune ruled people and Pisces people in general is that they tend to fib a lot. They tend to create a lot of white lies and they get lost in the fantasy that they have created for themselves. So by being honest, but secretive compassionate and kind, but not too open, this person could have had a lot of success in this year. Or if you're doing um, a reading for the preparatory year, you can advise the querent, this is the kind of attitude you need to adopt. And even if this person is a woman, by tuning into her masculine, caring, nurturing side, this person will have success because we see here a king and you might be wondering, yeah, Alexi, but I'm reading for a woman. Keep in mind that both men and women have um, a certain part of themselves that speaks about becoming a whole. Women have um, the psychological archetype of the animus within their psyche and men have the psychological archetype of the anima in their psyche, according to the Swiss psychotherapist Carl Gustav Jung. So, by blending the masculine with the feminine, this person is able to have success in the upcoming year. Okay, my loves, I really hope this helped. This video was a bit longer because we had a lot of positions to go through, but I really hope that you stayed with me and listened until the end. Let me know down below, are you using the circular spread? Would you think that this would be a great spread to use in your daily readings? Do you like the cat tarot? And also let me know what kind of spreads and what kind of decks you would like me to see used next. So until our next tarot school session, I'm sending you lots of love. Bye bye.